What it do, Dream Team? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the European Union explained, and I needed this video uh, just because I need to. I need I need it explained for me. And you guys have did a good job of kind of telling me in the comment section, but I need to see it in video form and follow along. So that's what we're here to do. But before we do that, what I need you guys to do is subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell, get a video or a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media, Patreon, all up top. You don't subscribe to any of it, follow the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me, human. I talk back. If you got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon or there's a Google form link in the description. What we got, EU? Where is the European Union? Obviously here somewhere, but much like the European continent itself, which has an unclear boundary, the European Union also has some fuzzy edges to it. To start, the official members of the European Union are, in decreasing order of population, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Italy, Spain, Poland, Romania, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Greece, Belgium, Portugal, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Sweden, Austria, Bulgaria, Denmark, Slovakia, Finland, Ireland, Croatia, Lithuania, Latvia, Slovenia, Estonia, Cyprus, Luxembourg, and Malta. The edges of the EU Jeez. will probably continue to expand further out as there are other countries yeah. in various stages of trying to become a member. I was gonna say, what about those little, little, little countries in the green? What's, what's going on there? Probably continue to expand further out as there are other countries in various stages of trying to become a member. How the EU works is hideously complicated and a story for another time, but for this video, <laughs> you need know only three things. First, countries okay. pay membership dues, and second, vote on the laws oh. they all must follow, and third, citizens of member countries are automatically your European Union citizens as well. This last that. means that if you're a citizen of any of these countries, you are free to live and work and retire in any of the others, which is nice, especially wow. if you think your country is too big or too small or too hot or too cold. The European Union gives you options. By the way, did you notice how all three of these statements have asterisks attached to this unhelpful footnote? Well, get used to it. Europe loves asterisks that add exceptions to complicated agreements. These three, for example, point us towards the first bit of border fuzziness with Norway, Iceland, and Little Liechtenstein, none of which are in the European Union, but if you're an EU citizen, you can live in these countries and Norwegians, Icelanders, or Liechtensteiners can live in yours. Why? In exchange for freedom of movement of people, they have to pay membership fees to the European Union, even though they aren't a part of it, and thus don't get a say in its laws that they still have to follow. This arrangement oh, wow. is the European Economic Area, and it sounds like a terrible deal were it not for that asterisk which grants EEA, but not EU members, a pass on some areas of law, notably farming and fishing, mm. something a country like, say, Iceland might care quite a lot about running themselves. Between the European Union and the European Economic Area, the continent looks mostly covered, with the notable exception of Switzerland, who remains neutral and fiercely independent, except for her participation uh -huh. in the Schengen Area. If you're from a country, I think that uh, even if you're not a part of the EU, but they make the laws, I like, I think you're still getting a pretty good deal out of it. To me, you get to go and live anywhere else in the European Union. Other people can come live there. You you get the same laws as everybody in the European Union. I think it's a good thing. It sounds cool. It's nice neutral to me. and fiercely independent, except for her participation in the Schengen area. If you're from a country that keeps her borders extremely clean and or well patrolled, the Schengen area is a bit mind-blowing because it's an agreement between countries to take a meh approach to borders. In the Schengen area, wow. international boundaries look like this. No border officers or passport checks oh, of any wow. kind. You can walk from Lisbon to Tallinn without identification or the need to answer the question business wow. or pleasure. For Switzerland, being part of Schengen but not part of the European Union means that non-Swiss can check in any time they like, but they can never stay. This kumbaya approach to borders isn't appreciated by everyone in the EU, most loudly the United Kingdom and Ireland who argue that islands are different, thus to get onto these fair isles you'll need a passport and a good reason. Britannia's reluctance to get fully involved with the EU brings us to the next topic, money. The European Union has its own fancy currency, the euro, used by the majority but not all of the European Union members. This economic union is called the Eurozone, and to join, a country must first reach certain financial goals, and lying about reaching those goals is certainly not something anyone would do. Most of the non-Eurozone members, when they meet the goals, will ditch their local currency in favor of the euro, but three of them, Denmark, Sweden, and of course, the United Kingdom, have asterisks attached to the euro section of the treaty, giving them a permanent opt-out. And weirdly, oh. four tiny European countries, Andorra, San Marino, Monaco, and Vatican City, have an asterisk giving them the exact reverse, the right to print and use euros as their money despite not being in the European Union at all. So that's the big picture. There's the EU, which makes all the rules, the Eurozone inside of it with a common currency, the European economic area outside of it where people can move freely, and the selective Schengen for countries that think borders just aren't worth the hassle. As you can see, there's some strange overlap with these borders, but we're not done talking about complications by a long shot, once again, because Empire. 
So Portugal and Spain have islands from their. This is wild, and I think UK they Brexit right, and so they're not a part of the European Union anymore. Am I right on that? I, th I think so. Uh, but ah, this is interesting to learn about. You don't know these laws. Complications by a long shot. Things. Once again, because it's empire. So Portugal and Spain have islands from their colonial days that they've never parted with. These are the Madeira and Canary Islands off the coast of Africa and the Azores well into the Atlantic. Because these islands are Spanish and Portuguese, they're part of the European Union as well. Adding a few islands to the EU's borders isn't a big deal until you consider France, the queen of not letting go. She still holds on to a bunch of islands in the Caribbean, Reunion oh, off the coast of Madagascar, and French Guiana in South America. As far as France is concerned, these are France too, which single-handedly extends the edge-to-edge -edge distance of the European Union Dang. across a third of the Earth's circumference. Collectively, Jeez. these bits of France, Spain, and Portugal are called the outermost regions, and they're the result of the simple answer to empire, just keep it. On the other hand, there's the United <laughs> Kingdom, the master of maintaining complicated relationships with her quasi-former oh lands, God. and she's by no means alone in this on such an empire-happy continent. The Netherlands and Denmark and France, again, all have what the European Union calls overseas territories. They're not part of the European Union, instead they're a bottomless well of asterisks due to their complicated relationships with both the European Union and their associated huh. countries, which makes it hard to say anything meaningful about them as a group, but in general, European Union law doesn't apply to these places, though in general oh. the people who live there are European Union citizens because huh. in general they have the citizenship of their associated country, so in general they can live anywhere in the EU they want, but in general other European Union citizens can't freely move to these territories. Which wow. makes these places a weird semi-permeable membrane of the European that Union is, proper yeah. and the final That's part we're going to talk about in detail, even though there are still many more one-off asterisks you might stumble upon, such as the Isle of Man or those Spanish cities in North Africa or Gibraltar who pretends to be part of Southwest England sometimes, or that region in Greece where it's totally legal to ban women, or Saba and friends who are part of the Netherlands and so should be part of the EU but aren't, or the Faroe Islands upon which while citizens of Denmark live they lose their EU citizenship, and on and on it goes. These asterisks Jeez. almost never end, but this video must. <laughs> that was a good video, bro. I was confused a little bit on a lot of these. It was, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, but at the same time it's not that much. Uh, Countries are part of the EU can move freely within each other with their outer overseas territories that are still part of the European Union where the, they're still European citizens but don't have to follow European laws. They can move to other countries in the European Union. People can't move in them. I got it. Uh, that's all we got for this one. If you can't, uh, <laughs> uh, make sure you subscribe. Or if you have a favorite video you want to see or hear me react to, you can subscribe to Patreon. Or in the description section, there's a Google form link. Hit the link, fill out your suggestions, send it to me. Want me to get to yours faster, fill out premium. Make sure you hit subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media and Patreon, all up top. You want to subscribe, you need it. Put all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy, Dina. Out.